Hey guys, look at this jetpack. Pretty sick, right? It works on PC and on mobile, unlike some other tutorials. And today I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is to make. Alright guys, so first off we're going to need our jetpack model. Your jetpack model can be as many parts as you want, as long as they're all welded together and they're all unanchored and can collide needs to be off as well. This model is actually going to be an accessory, so it's not really a model. I just like calling it a model. So you're going to put all the parts that you would put inside of your model inside of the accessory and you're going to want to make sure that you have a handle. Inside of the handle you're going to want to put two particle emitters. These emitters are going to be where the fumes from our jetpack come out of. So you can actually just move these around just like so. And I put mine right at the bottom of both of my little jet boosters. This model that I'm using right here is just a free model. Um, it's just the model, not the scripts. The scripts I wrote myself. The model is just a free model. It might actually be taken from Jailbreak. So I'm not going to link the model in the description. You can just use your own, um, whether that's a free model or you make your own. And the next part of setting up is going to be in Starter Pack. We're just going to want to put a tool in there. You can name it Jetpack or whatever you'd like. And we're also going to take our accessory, our Jetpack accessory, and we're going to put that inside of Server Storage. And next up inside of our tool, we're going to add a remote event. We can name this remote event. Um, I'm just going to name it on jump. And next we're going to add a local script into our tool. All right. So we're going to start off by getting our variables, starting with the user input service. Now we're going to get the player. and our remote event. We're just gonna leave the character and humanoid set as nil right now. Those variables will be set once the tool is equipped. And we're going to set a few more variables. So you can play around with the speed and the power. Basically how this works is it allows your character to basically just infinitely double jump. That's how the jetpack works. And the speed is how many jumps you can do. So every 0.2 seconds you can jump again. It'll make basically just make you fly faster. And the power is how high you jump on each jump. These variables I just found work for me, but you can play around with those if you'd like. Now we're going to grab the tool. Alright, next up, when the tool is equipped, we're going to want to call a function. We're going to now set our character and humanoid. We're also going to set the jump anim. We're also going to set the jump animation and the old power. Next up, we're going to set a function to when the humanoid changes state. So now if the tool is equipped, we're going to check what state the humanoid is in and figure out what to do. All right, and for the last part of this function, we're just going to want to set equipped to true. Now we're going to set a function to when the tool is unequipped.
All right, and so when the tool is unequipped, we're gonna wanna set the walk speed and the jump power back to normal. What I'm doing here with the animation is the animation loves to bug out for some reason when flying because you're repeatedly jumping in the air so it just makes your character spaz out which doesn't look the best so we are basically setting the animation to a free fall which makes it look a lot cleaner and here we just kind of have to clean that up and set it back to normal all right and now we're going to set up one more function All right guys, and that's it for our local script. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to create a server script. That server script should be inside of the tool. We're gonna to start off by grabbing some variables. We got the tool, now we're gonna grab the jetpack. We're gonna leave the character as nil. We're going to get our on jump remote event. And we're gonna leave our cloned jetpack as nil right now. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find out when the tool is equipped. Let's set our character in humanoid. So what I did right here is I cloned the accessory from service storage and I'm setting it to the humanoid, which basically just, which is basically just a Roblox built-in function that parents it to the character and basically adds it on. The other thing that I might've missed is you're gonna wanna make sure that you add a back body attachment onto your handle. You're gonna need to do that for all accessories. That's how they work. That's, it will basically attach whatever you name this attachment to that attachment inside of the character that you attach it to, if that makes sense. This attachment is on the character because on the character, there's an attachment named body back attachment that's just gonna line them up. And since the handle is welded to the rest of the model, they're all gonna come with it. Next up, we're gonna find out when the tool is unequipped and destroy the jetpack. All right, we're almost there. All we have to do now is set a function to when the on jump remote event is fired by the server or the client, sorry. All right, and now all I'm doing is I'm setting the particle emitter on and off depending on the jump type, which is passed by the local script. So right here we passed it as true. We pass true, which will turn the particle emitter on. And over here when we pass false, that will turn the particle emitter off. All right guys, and great job, we're all done here. Jetpack is working perfectly. If you have any questions or you just wanna give me some great motivation, you can leave that in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, I love you all. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Great job.